Hello and welcome to today's broadcast. Whether you're joining us live or you are able to catch us on the rebroadcast, I want you to know that you are always welcome here. Today we are going to be talking about my recent annual physical results and I'm here to share the good, the bad, and the things I wasn't expecting. So welcome if you are joining us. Please take a second to uh, hit that subscribe button if you're joining us on YouTube. Make sure that you hit that little bell notification. That way you will get uh, notified when we go live or upload new content. And on Facebook, I ask that you do the same. Please hit that like button and then make sure that you are set up to receive all notifications from my page. So before I get started I want you guys to leave me a comment in the comment section and let me know that you are on schedule to make sure that you are getting your annual physical done I think getting our physical done physicals done on an annual basis are it is so important to us as far as gathering information that allows us to have the opportunity to make informed decisions about how we are caring for ourselves. So I am very adamant about this community, making sure that we are staying up to date on all of the doctor's appointments and annual screenings that we have available to us. So please make sure you leave a comment in the comment section, hold yourself accountable, and let us know that you are getting those appointments done. So uh, if you're new, I just take a second to introduce myself. My name's Diane and I am a 53 year old menopausal woman, which will come into play in today's discussion about why I'm sharing that with you. I have spent the last six years practicing intermittent fasting to reverse some of the things that came up in one of my doctor's appointments unexpectedly when my doctor called to notify me that I was pre-diabetic and intermittent fasting has allowed me the opportunity to not only reverse all of that, but also take advantage of all of the amazing anti-aging benefits that this lifestyle has to offer. So here in this community, I do like to share a lot of things that I go through as an aging woman and some of the things that I put in place in my life to reverse the things that I'm not happy with to help inform and educate you as well. Before I get started, I also like to also make a note of the fact that I am not a doctor and in no way is the information I'm sharing here with you today used as a means to prescribe a certain type of medical treatment for you or giving you any sort of medical advice for what you need to do for yourself in the in the uh, your own personal well-being. I'm sharing the information that I have received on me and the things that I will be doing in my life to just make sure that I am staying as healthy and fit as I possibly can and that I'm aging successfully. So with all that being said, let's get started. And then don't forget to leave me that comment because I'm going to come back around and make sure that I answer a lot of your questions and comments when we get done. So my annual physical was a couple of weeks ago. Yesterday I went in to get my blood results and some scan results that I had done as well. And I want to always make sure that I am uh, coming here and being as transparent as I can with you guys so that if you have anything come up in your or annual physical or with any of your blood work, I want you to feel empowered and informed about the choices that you can make for you. So some of the things that I just kind of expressed of the reasons why I started intermittent fasting and really paying attention to the nutritional lifestyle that I was living was because of the fact that I was pre-diabetic and I was suffering a lot of those um, precursors to Alzheimer's and a lot of the, the cognitive decline that a lot of us feel as we're going through some hormonal changes. And so I'm happy to report that all of that is normal. Uh, my fasting blood glucose is normal. My metabolic panel is normal. And a personal victory for me as a postmenopausal woman um, is the fact that my thyroid is functioning perfectly. Um, and so I always take that as a personal win for me, knowing that the things that I'm doing um, are actually working. And so I'm super happy about all of that. My mammogram came back normal. So another year I always, whew, I don't have to worry about that. And we also did a little, um, skin uh, cancer look over and all of that is fine as well. So all of those things that kind of like keep us awake at night are things that are definitely working in my favor this year. And so I'm super grateful and blessed for all of that. So I wanted to go over some of the blood work results that I got back and then I'm going to save the unexpected thing for the last. So make sure you guys stay toward the end to the end for all of this. So um, let me go through uh, these things first. So vitamin D is perfect. Um, I know a lot of people in today are uh, fighting uh, vitamin D deficiencies and are worried about if they're getting enough vitamin D, especially when they're fasting, uh, because we are reducing some of the uh, nutritional intake that most normal people are. So I'm proud to say that my vitamin D is normal. My iron is normal as well. Uric acid is perfect, so nothing to worry about there. Like I said, fasting glucose, again, is perfect. 
Um, and all my um, um, CBC, what is that, complete blood count tests all came back normal as well. So all of that stuff is all normal. So I'm super grateful for all of that. Um, what other things came back? Okay, so let's talk about, um, I talked about my thyroid. Thyroid is working perfectly. So as a 53-year-old postmenopausal woman, I am super blessed and grateful for all of that as well. And that is one of those signs that everything that I'm doing is working. Um, and so make sure that you are uh, doing all the things that, that keep your body healthy as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to get into was cholesterol. And I'm going to precursor this uh, conversation with the fact that I have always had funky cholesterol readings, even back in my 20s. Um, when I was in my 20s, I was in the Air Force um, and I was on a flight crew, so we had to go through annual physicals and we had to be evaluated by a, a flight surgeon. And so the flight surgeon determined whether we were eligible for flying or safe for flying based on health conditions. And so there was one time in my 20s where I was almost grounded from flying because I had high cholesterol. So I am just a person who always has higher than normal cholesterol readings and that was the case uh, this year as well. And it's funny because I, I keep, and I hope you guys do as well, I keep all of my annual blood work and I go back and I look at the previous couple of years and kind of see how things are fluctuating. And it's funny because last year my cholesterol was completely normal on all levels and this year it is high in a couple areas and I'm gonna explain that to you now. So my HDL is totally normal, so nothing to worry about there. My LDL is high. My total cholesterol ratio is perfect, so nothing to worry about there. And my triglycerides are great. So all in all, my doctor said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. I'm not concerned about your cholesterol as well. And the reason I wanna share this with you guys is because I know a lot of times when you get a report back from your blood work that one aspect of your cholesterol is high, we tend to panic and think that we have to make radical changes to make that shift. So like I said, my cholesterol fluctuates from high to normal and my lifestyle is pretty consistent. So the only different, the only thing different that I've done in this last year that I wasn't doing before is I've just eliminated a lot of animal products, which seems weird that my cholesterol would raise by reducing that uh, specific thing in my food. So I'm not concerned about it, like I said, and neither is my doctor. I'm just gonna kind of watch it over this next year and I'm gonna do something specific in the month of April. And this is something that I did before when I got a um, one aspect of my cholesterol coming I mean, a 21 day sort of cellular reset and you do it through uh, the process of going vegan for 21 days and taking a series of supplements where you kind of strip your system down and then you rebuild it back up. And when I did that, I think it was 10 years ago, right, Michael? Michael and I did it together. My cholesterol levels just completely reset. And so I thought, what the heck? I'll just go ahead and do that again in April and just get myself back on a reset, even though my doctor's not concerned and she thinks whatever I'm doing with intermittent fasting and the nutritional choices I'm making are fine. I just thought, what the heck, let me reset everything and then next year when I go back to get my blood work done, we can kind of see where I'm at. So I'll do that in the month of April and I'll keep you guys, keep you guys posted on that as well. So all in all, even my cholesterol is fine, irregardless of the fact that my LDL is a little bit high. Not extremely high, just a little. And again, because my HDL is so good, that ratio of LDL to HDL is fine and my doctor's not worried about it. Again, triglycerides are low, which is another one of those things that in my book, I really feel comfortable and confident that the lifestyle choices that I'm making are great because my triglycerides are low as well. So all of that was good. Um, what else did I have? What else did I want to talk about, Michael? I think that's it, right? Okay. So the other thing that I want to talk about is I had a DEXA bone density scan. The last time I had this done was 2017. Everything was fine. This year, not so good. Not, I mean, not bad, but not, not, not as good as it was the last time. So I came back with the diagnosis of being, uh, um, of having osteopenia. So what is osteopenia? Uh, the best way that I can describe osteopenia is it's like the precursor to osteoporosis, just as like insulin resistance is the precursor to diabetes. So it's just signs that my bone density isn't as good as it used to be. And let me tell you why I am not 
shocked by that, even though at 53, I wasn't expecting this to happen so soon. So my family has a history of osteoporosis, just as they do dementia and Alzheimer's, lucky me, right? And so I knew that some point down the road, going to have this DEXA scan, something was gonna come up, showing that there was gonna be some changes and I wasn't anticipating the change being good. Some things about me personally, I am a fragile child. Uh, I have broken bones my entire life. My very first thing that I broke was a vertebrae in my neck when I was a toddler and I was in a neck brace up to here learning how to walk. I was, uh, I think my mom was reading me a bedtime story and I fell out and she grabbed me by the collar of my shirt and snapped my neck and a vertebrae in my neck um, was crushed. They didn't think I was gonna ever be able to walk. Two, and two half marathons later in a year of running, I'm fine. But it's just that indication that there were problems very early on. I was also a very sickly infant and I had major digestive problems as a young baby. I don't know if that correlates, but this is why I really have the women in, in my community do life and food history work, right? When you can put pieces of your puzzle together, when things come up in maybe in some conditions with your health, you, you aren't so shocked by it because you already know your history. So this wasn't a shock to me. I already know my history. I was in a neck brace twice before kindergarten for broken bones. I also broke my collarbone. My sister flipped me. I think I've been broken almost every or sprained every finger on my hands. I have multiple uh, ankle sprains. I've broken an elbow twice, once falling out of an airplane. Yes. I've also been categorized as one of those bull in the china shop type of people. I move very quickly and I'm often doing more than one thing at a time when I'm going about my day. It's just part of who I am. So being diagnosed with osteopenia wasn't a shock for me. It just happened a little sooner than I thought. Then I also have to put into consideration that I'm also postmenopausal and have been postmenopausal now for about four years. So we also know that a women in menopause also have a higher risk of osteoporosis. I think it was 50% of women in, in menopause or postmenopausal also have osteoporosis. So it's just that thing that happens to us. I cannot be, uh, I cannot put my body into a um, hormone replacement type of situation because I also have problems with estrogen levels being increased in my body and my body having a tendency to clot all those warnings about birth control pills and um, a lot of the hormone replacement therapies, I'm the risk factor for all of those things. So I don't have any options there. So my plan of attack for what I'm going to do with my osteopenia, which cannot be, per my doctor's uh, information, cannot be reversed, but can be slowed down. So just because you have osteopenia doesn't necessarily mean that you have to uh, eventually suffer from osteoporosis and so here's some things that I am going to really focus on some of these things I've already I'm already doing but I'm gonna really be laser focused on it over this next year to make sure that the next DEXA scan I get next year isn't going to show further decline in my bone density so here are some things to do and if you're a woman who's in menopause or maybe even perimenopause or you're postmenopausal and you're worried about your bone density these are some things that you can do very easily in the course of your day and fits beautifully with this lifestyle that we're living here so uh, increased vitamin D intake even though I'm not deficient in vitamin D my doctor did recommend 2,000 to 5,000 international units per day to help offset this osteopenia becoming a, a bigger issue for me down the road or eventually turning into osteoporosis. So, so a vitamin D supplement is what I'm going to take 2,000 to 5,000 international units. If you're not deficient, that's not a problem according to what my doctor said, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Um, um, increasing my collagen intake. So I'm already using a collagen peptide every day. And I think what I'm going to do is just increase how much of that that I am using. Um, she also recommended even bone broth, which is something that I just don't do. Uh, just because I think my, my fasting window is so short and I just don't, I really didn't have a need for it. Now I do. So I'm going to be adding in some bone broth into my daily routine as well. Some other more obvious things about osteopenia that you uh, want to be aware of is weight-bearing exercises. 
actually will help uh, uh, keep your bone density where it is. I thought that was shocking for me since I am a runner um, and I'm still suffering. Again, it's those things in life that just happen to us. So I'm gonna continue running. I will always be a walker. I'll be incorporating some um, more strength training, which I was telling Michael, it's amazing how God works because that was already my plan for uh, this year and every month I'm adding in a new strength training sort of um, area of focus for my body. So that's just gonna go as planned and will definitely benefit my body with adding in some more strength training type of things. Uh, avoid smoking, which I don't do, so that's not a problem. Avoid alcohol. Surprisingly, I stopped drinking alcohol in September, so that's just gonna uh, be a benefit for me in the, in the current situation that I'm in. Um, another specific thing that's been recommended for people who um, are suffering from osteopenia or are worried about osteoporosis down the road is avoiding sodas. So not sparkling water. So it's not the carbonation in beverages that causes um, osteoporosis or for your bones to break down. It is some agent in the, I forget what it's called, but it's some acid within sodas. So the drink, like a Diet Coke or a Coke or those kind of things that actually um, 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 increase your risk of oste osteopenia or osteoporosis. So carbonated water is not a problem, so I don't drink sodas anymore. I used to be habitual about it, but I gave that up probably, what, 10 years ago? So that's okay, not a good new problem for me. And the other thing was caffeine. So that's the thing for me, it's probably the last thing. Um, I had, can definitely say that I don't drink coffee the way I used to, didn't have any coffee today. Um, coffee is not that thing that I physically need anymore as I get up and start my day. Coffee is more that thing, it's like a comfort thing or a routine I like to have in my day. So I'm just not gonna do it the way I used to and if I have an occasional coffee that I'll just worry about that on that day. But coffee I don't think is gonna be that one thing that's gonna make anything worse for me. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to share with you guys about osteopenia and why I'm not shocked that this is something that I'm dealing with at this stage in my life. Um, many of you might not know this, um, when I was 38 years old, I suffered from a miscarriage really late in pregnancy. I was about four months into the pregnancy and I lost the pregnancy. Uh, one of the risk factors for me getting pregnant and carrying a baby to full term um, down the road was, a, was that blood clotting issue with increased levels of estrogen in my system. So when I got pregnant with Gabby at 39, I um, had to go on blood thinners to make sure that I didn't have another miscarriage because this was gonna be it for me, my last attempt of having another child. And so because we desperately wanted our sweet little Gabby, I took the risks of knowing that blood thinners could also lead to osteoporosis for me down the road. And so that's another one of those things you have to put the pieces of your life puzzle together to make sure that you can make sense of these sort of things when they happen to you down the road. So I knew that that was also another risk that I was taking, but the benefit outweighed the risk for me because we have our beautiful, sweet little Gabby. So I also know that that's another one of those indicators of why I'm in this situation today. So again, make sure you pay attention to your food story and your life story. Don't go in a state of panic. Try to put the pieces of your life puzzle together so it makes sense for you. So all in all, I'm not worried about a thing. I'm really optimistic about everything. I always take things on as a challenge and a opportunity for me to become an expert. So. I will share everything that I learn about osteopenia and osteoporosis, and I will take you guys on the journey with me as I incorporate some of these things into my life and as I make some lifestyle changes and do some things like little resets. So I'll share with you what happens to me after I do my April cleanse. Like I said, I've done it before and it totally reset my entire body and so I'm, I'm anticipating that will be the case again. And then one other thing that I'm doing that I wanna share with you guys, and this is one of those things where you take your health into your own hands. Uh, in March, actually March 13th, I am going to a place called Dexa Fit and I am having my bone density um, test done again, just as a I had already planned it even before I went to my doctor. So it'll be a good, um, you know, second opinion type of thing. So I'm getting my bone density uh, tested again. And I'm also getting a, a body scan, which shows what your lean body mass is and what kind of visceral fat you have on your body. I'm also getting a metabolic, um, uh, resting metabolic rate test done, which tells me 
really how much I should be consuming in the way of nutrition in a day to kind of keep my beta metabolic rate where I want it to be. And I'm also gonna do a VO2 max test, which I'm super excited about. Um, and that will really help me set my own training heart rate zone. So I'm gonna take you guys on uh, that journey with me as well. So I'm really optimistic about all of the testing that I'm getting done and where I'm sitting with my health as a 53 year old postmenopausal woman. And as I left my doctor's office, she told me that whatever it is that I'm doing with this lifestyle that I've created for myself, keep doing it because everything is showing that it's working. And these little hiccups are nothing that are related to intermittent fasting or this keto-like lifestyle that I'm living. It's just part of who I am and it's part of my history for years and years. And it really has allowed me to keep myself as healthy as possible moving through this aging process. So like I said, having a normal thyroid, not having to deal with breast cancer, having my fasting blood glucose and all of those sugar related diseases that I was suffering from all healed and not a problem for me anymore. I feel very blessed and very grateful for this journey that I have been on. So I hope that helps you with some of the maybe um, testing that you're gonna be getting done for your annual physical, maybe some questions that you can ask your doctor. Maybe take some time to do a little life history inventory and see what things might become uh, 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 come up for you. I don't wanna say a problem because I don't think any of this is negative in any way, but some things that you might wanna keep your eye on, how you might be able to head some things off and what plans you can put in place in case you go to the doctor and you get some news about something that maybe you were anticipating down the road coming up a little sooner than you had planned. Michael, did I cover everything? Oh, I think you did. I think I did. So weight for me is great, uh, uh, BMI is great, all of those things that we worry about as we're getting older, all of those things are fantastic. So that is just, again, for me, that proof that everything that we are doing here in this community is definitely working and the other things I can definitely handle for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here to uh, Facebook. I'll answer your questions and comments uh, and then I'll jump on over to YouTube if you guys don't mind hanging out for me over there for a second. Bev, got it done. Congratulations, girlfriend, proud of you. Teresa checking in from Flower Mound, Texas, 2018 grad. Judy uh, from Louisiana is here. Uh, Mara Chewy, I think it is. Uh, my physical every year, I always turns out normal, but my BMI is 26 when it should be 24. I ah, just work on that. Like if that's the, the biggest thing you have to worry about, girlfriend, trust me, that's fine. Just work on uh, doing the things that you need to do to get that lowered. And I would say intermittent fasting would definitely be the best thing for sure. Uh, so, um, and if you're looking and feeling your best and you're happy, I wouldn't even worry about it. But if it's something that's concerning you, just get some of those fasts and that'll, that'll balance itself out. Also, my bone density is super good. I am postmenopausal and have struggled to lose weight give the past three years. Well, if weight's the only thing you have to worry about, girlfriend, jump into our intermittent fasting for today's Age of Woman course. We can help you get some things uh, balanced back out there for sure. And honestly, don't let weight be that thing that's keeping you from being happy. It sounds like you're living a really healthy life and you don't have any major things to worry about. So uh, definitely focus on all the good there for sure. Okay. So Lisa, hello, uh, Janice, October class graduate, um, up to date on my annual physical. Awesome. Good to hear that. Kristen scheduled for March. Fantastic. Let us know how it goes. Shannon. Yes. Results last week. High cholesterol. Never had that before. 50 years old, July, 2019 grad MLS course participant. Now, Shannon, what part of your cholesterol is high? I'd be interested to hear that. Deb, I did have a physical last year. My cholesterol levels are high 327. It's time to check again. Yeah, for sure. Deb. And then, um, what? Watch me over the, the month of April um, and see what I'm doing and maybe that could be something that you can do to just kind of flush things out and maybe you can get a reset on that cholesterol as well. Lisa from Galveston, good to have you with us. Uh, Brenda from North Carolina, I am up on all my annual screenings. Stop stevia, I have broken my plateau. My weight loss has started again. Yeah, it's probably that malodextrin, maltrodextrin that was in that stevia that was holding you up. So I'm glad you were able to let go of that and you have broken that plateau. Shannon, um, had my annual and mammogram. All is great except cholesterol is high. Um, 250, I will reset in May. Awesome. So Shannon, um, what part of that is high um, as well? And then maybe we can break that down for you because like I said, my doctor looked at mine and she, she was like, oh, I don't even know why your cholesterol would be high. Everything else with you is great. And so it's that thing where you have to just take that little piece out and um, 
and um and then put that food story together like i'm not shocked at all and it's not the cholesterol that i need to really be concerned about so um so make sure you're looking at it the correct way as well and then nancy next check is march but i did get mammogram yesterday should get the results next week awesome keep us posted on that for sure and then come back around with us after you get your results from your physical and let us know how things went um shannon i think i overindulged over the holidays same for me in my 20s mine was a tad high i always regroup and test doctor said no worries just regroup as i always do thanks for sharing now yeah, you're welcome for sure um and then uh darlene february 2019 grad and have taken your other classes been doing this a year last three months had my first kidney stone and i'm having surgery next week to remove since it is large and Analyzing it all. Oh, Darlene, girlfriend, my mom had kidney stones. We will say a prayer for you, girlfriend. That stuff is no fun at all. Hope your surgery goes well. And remember, um, fast your way through the recovery on that surgery for sure. You will bounce back in no time. And then uh, Lynn, 2019 graduate F3 mindset course. I will be going for my yearly checkup in March and I will ask for extra tax to make sure I'm not deficient in anything. Yeah, for sure. Anything that the, your insurance will cover, ask for. I asked specifically to even have a testosterone test and she couldn't do it because uh, our, our insurance company doesn't, or that most insurance companies don't cover it, which I think is stupid. Um, but whatever, I'm feeling great. So I'm not going to worry about that either. So I'll keep you guys posted. So the journey for 2020 will be osteopenia, I guess, and doing all the things that I need to do to make sure that I stop that bad boy in its tracks. And um, it'll be interesting to see with a retest where that goes. The other thing I'm um, scheduled to get done, which I haven't done yet, and I'll keep you guys posted on that, is the calcium test on my heart, which I'm not expecting that one to come back perfect. Uh, again, just because of my family history and the cholesterol issues I have, I don't even know if they're related, but I'm just not expecting that one to be good. Um, but I'll deal with that when, that when that comes back. And again, it has nothing to do with this lifestyle. It has to do with just my genetics and the way my body just seems to hold on to some of those things. But I'll keep you posted on that one um, as well. And then the other funky thing that I didn't talk about yet either was I had an EKG done in the doctor's office and there were some irregularities or something to that, but the same thing has happened to me three other times in different decades of my life. So not just my 50s, it happened in my 40s and it also happened in my 20s, I believe. And so I think it's just that thing, I have a funky heartbeat as well. Thank you, Lord, for all these funky things that I have to deal with. Um, and so she was, um, that's why she's suggesting that the, the calcium test for my heart. I begged her to give me a, a, a a referral to get a stress test because I love getting stress tests done. It's sort of like an ego boost for me and what I can do on a treadmill. But she said it wasn't um, so serious that I had to go in for a stress test. So sadly, I won't be able to do that. Uh, but my VO2 max should reveal some good information um, and I'll be doing that in a couple weeks well, as well. Michael's going to videotape that so you guys can see all those tests that I do in case you're interested in doing something like that for yourself as well. So all in all, like I said, my doctor says whatever I'm doing, keep doing it because it is definitely working as far as all those age related diseases um, and everything else that I'm dealing with is just part of the Diane Parham physical DNA makeup and I will do the best that I can to make sure that that doesn't become problematic for me down the road. So as always my message to all of you guys is to stay informed use information as the means for making decisions that you're going to make for your life and the lifestyle that you want to live. Uh, information is something that um, I don't think we rely on enough and we kind of just throw darts at stuff thinking we're going to try some things and you might be wasting a lot of time and energy and money. So get some tests done, then go from there, put the pieces to your life puzzle together, and then keep your head um, on straight. A lot of the reason why I don't panic about these kind of things and I go into them as like a challenge for me and something that I kind of am going to take on as a new adventure is a lot of the work that I've done up here as well. I'm very healthy mentally and emotionally about how it is I'm choosing to live my life and how it is I'm choosing to, to uh, keep my body um, very uh, able as I'm going through this aging process. And so I think that that's a big part of this as well. Make sure you're emotional okay with the decisions that you're making and then I think when something comes up that uh, maybe you weren't expecting or is something that you might consider a challenge or something that's bad you'll be able to handle it in such a it's such a more controlled manner because you're gonna emotionally and mentally go into it with a plan of attack and not feeling like you're being defeated so I'm excited I can't wait to take you guys on the journey with me and everything that I learned in this process you know I'm always going to be able to share with you here as well so stay tuned uh, 
uh, we will be doing some work this year for sure. Um, if you haven't already done so, my intermittent fasting for today's Aging Woman course, which is the reason why I think I am so healthy at the age of 53, almost 54, uh, definitely as a postmenopausal woman, is because of the lifestyle that I teach other women to live here and being very, very... Um, um, empowered about how it is we're choosing to age as we're going through this aging process and being informed about what our body needs as we're going through this aging process. So if you haven't jumped in with us yet, our next course starts on March 7th. I would love to have you jump on board with us. I'm going to bust out of here for now because I'm promising to keep these at about 30 minutes. I will go back through any comments that I haven't read yet and make sure that I get you guys, uh, your comments read over. And if there's anything I need to answer for you, I will make sure I get back to you as well. Have a super fantastic Friday. It's going to be spring like here in Texas, so you know we'll be spending some time outside. And then I'll see you guys back here on Monday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time.